Good evening. It's good to see you tonight. If you will, please grab your hymnal and turn to number 389. 389. Man, y'all are noisy tonight. <laughs> 389. More about Jesus. <clears throat> More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, more, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus let me learn, more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of her Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on his throne, riches in glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase, more of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. All right, 295, 295. Revive us again. Two ninety five. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again.
<laughs> Go across the page. Set my soul afire. <clears throat> Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me. Let thy voice be heard. Millions grope in darkness in this day and hour. I will be a witness. Fill me with thy power. Set my soul afire, Lord. Set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Set my soul afire, Lord, in my daily life. Far too long I've wandered in this day of strife. Nothing else will matter but to live for thee. I will be a witness, for Christ lives in me. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. Good evening. There it is. There it is. And it's good to see you. Glad that you are here tonight. We finish up this uh, journey through the, through the New Testament tonight. We're in Revelation chapter 5. So we hope to finish, finish that up tonight. And uh, next week we're going to do uh, some of the, we won't have time to do all of them, but we'll do some of the voices of, of Easter uh, next week as we try to do every year. Uh, leading up to Christmas and also to Easter for, for both those two uh, holidays. So that's what we'll do uh, next Wednesday night. So but anyway, I'm glad that you're here. There's some announcements on the back of your bulletin. And I'm going to let you read those. There's a sign-up right now for a new ladies Bible study uh, called Breathe. And uh, if you would uh, like to be a part of one of those, you stop and sign up and, and uh, get on that list for for that, for this uh, coming up Bible study. Okay, some youth events this week, and uh, lock in on Friday night and head it up to Tyler, I think it is, on Saturday uh, for a day at uh, Sky Ranch. So uh, that's, uh, that's on the back of your bulletin. There's a men's little trip on the 1st of April. That's, I think that's a Monday, and uh, it's uh, to Carthage for... I don't see the guy's name. What's the guy's name, Richard? Brandon Granger, Granger Smith. And uh, so we're, we're going to carry the van, and, and uh, everything's free. So uh, there's a list up front. If you'd like to go, sign that on Sunday or go through there tonight and uh, sign up for that so we make sure we have room for everybody and have transportation ready. So, uh, so that's going on. Uh, did they did they get us all on Facebook today about dinner that they were some things short for the youth event? Okay, okay, I jotted it down, so I was gonna I was gonna ask. So we're 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 good. So so uh, so that's good. All right, here's here's prayer requests. Uh, one I was handed, and uh, this is Barbara Garland's sister. 
her name is uh, Doris Owens, and she has cancer, and uh, she's in hospital down at the Woodlands, and uh, she's going to be put on hospice care this week. So, so add Barbara's sister, Doris Owen, to your, uh, to your prayer list, and uh, I know that they would uh, appreciate it. I don't know of anybody out of our immediate church family that's in the hospital don't mean we don't have somebody just means I don't know about it but uh, so we're, we're grateful for that the ones that we did have uh, as of the last few days Ronnie Lusk he has now been moved over to uh, Castle Pines and so he's there for a little while and uh, they were having a meeting today and uh, as of right now though Donna has gone home with their son over to New Orleans and uh, so that, that won't last a long, long time, but uh, they were supposed to have a meeting today after I left and uh, to, to come up with a plan for that. So, so remember Ronnie and Donna in your prayers. And here's two names to add to the church family uh, prayer list. One I just forgot to add. I talked to him last night, but Brenda Rye, Curtis's wife, uh, she, and I can't remember what the, do you remember it, Charles? Yeah, it's back. I don't remember. She's got a two or three different things going on with her back, and they're waiting to hear from Houston surgeons down there. And, uh, and then, of course, Medicare has to put their stamp of approval on everything. And uh, so, so anyway, remember uh, Brenda and Curtis. He's just getting over that shoulder surgery that he had. And Linda Wright uh, sent me a message this afternoon that she had, is she falling, hurt her hip, LaDonna? Okay, well, she sent me, she wasn't, <laughs> I know more than you do then. <laughs> uh, you you fallen from grace, I guess. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Linda said she had fallen. Doctor told her just to go home and do some recliner duty. And, and uh, so, so add her to your, add her to your list. Royce, Royce McGoy spent the, Good bit of time last night in the ER and the doctor today. He stepped on a nail and uh, has some infection stuff going on in his foot. So he's home on, uh, on no duty. And uh, so remember, remember Royce. And uh, Bonnie Kamling, she's been in the hospital for a couple of weeks after a broke hip and she's home. And uh, so thankful for that. Sherry went to Houston yesterday to get checked out for her, I believe it was her hip and uh, got, a, got a report that didn't, didn't have to have surgery right now. And I think more concerned about the knee than the hip. Is that, is that the way it was? So, uh, so we're grateful for that. Keith and Judy are on the way home. Uh, they, they finished up about 4 o'clock today, and she did much better uh, with everything this round than she did last round, so, so we're grateful for that. And Mary Kay's been having some trouble. I mentioned that on Sunday. And I didn't call her back today to check, but uh, remember Mary Kay in your prayers, if you would. I don't think I know any updates on, I was just kind of scanned the list there. I don't know any updates on anybody uh, from, from that point forward. And uh, we, we've got a, a number of folks, and one of these is, uh, is, I think it's the guy you filled in for for a while, Brother, Brother Mike, Robert Langford. Uh, he's, he's waiting for surgery. And, uh, but he, he, also, he, has some, he has some cancer, but he has some other issues going on that they need to get cleared up. So uh, add Robert. Well, he's already on there, but pray for Robert Langford. He's the pastor. What's that church? Wakefield Baptist Church. So uh, uh, remember, remember this family in your prayers. Okay? And uh, on the bereaved, I've got Taxi's sister, and her service will be tomorrow up in... Uh, up in Virginia, so uh, remember uh, their family in your prayers. And uh, I just had uh, word not too long before I came back here that uh, Burtis Bowles, I don't know if Burtis is still a member of our church or not, but he was several years ago and uh, had to go in the nursing home uh, down in Huntington for a while, and, uh, but he passed away today. And uh, so remember the Bowles family. Had some relation to Randy and Connie. And I think Randy's dad and, and Burtis were brothers, if I, if I remember right. But uh, remember them in your prayers. Have all of our nursing home people listed for you there. 
And uh, so let's remember them and all, all of our military folks and, and the ministries that we have listed there. Let, let me give you one, and this, this may, this, I don't know if this is going to be offensive to you or not, but I'm, I'm going to give this prayer request tonight. And if you get up and walk out, you get up and walk out. But uh, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what your views are. I, I know we pray for our nation. And I don't know what your views are on Donald Trump. And I don't care what your views are on Donald Trump. I don't agree with his personal life. I don't agree with a lot of things about him. But one thing I do agree with is this. He loves the United States of America. And, and there is a large facet of the controlling people in the United States of America that are doing everything that they can to get rid of him. And he's in a deal right now where he has to come up and he, he's a billionaire. Um, he's, and I'm sure that he truly is a billionaire. But he's got he's to come up, I heard this this afternoon, that some judgment has been passed, and he has to come up with half a billion dollars Monday. And, you know, and one guy I heard talking about this, he said this, he said, he said a billionaire, he said, I'll just use, I, I think most of us are relatively in the same boat. If we, say, if we say we have $50,000, then most of us can go to our bank, and in a few minutes, we can somehow attain that $50,000. He said, if you're, a, if you're a billionaire, he said, it doesn't work that way. He said, if you're a billionaire, you have your money invested in stuff that makes you money, not at 2% and 1.9%, but he said, he said, it's in real estate, it's in capital. And he said, so you can't turn around and do that. He said, so, so they've got him in a bind. So here's what I'm asking you to do. I don't care what side of the fence you sit on. I do care, but we're not going to debate that. Time. You know what side I sit on. But, but here's the deal. I want you to pray for him. And I want you to pray for him because he is the only one running, in my opinion, for high office in this nation that gives one iota about this nation. I, I, I honestly don't think that the others do. And so we, it, it's hard for us to, as, as poor people, it's hard for us to sit here and say that we're asking God to bless a billionaire. We need God to bless a billionaire some way, somehow, to, uh, to, to make him where he's able to, we need him to run for president in November, my opinion. Fire me, leave me, whatever, whatever the case. If you're in agreement, you pray, okay? You, you, just, make that, you just make that a part of your prayer, and if it offends you, I'm sorry, and uh, we'll, we'll go on anyway, okay? All right, any more? Need helpers to paint crosses out at the cross barn. Two of the, two of the main helpers, one of them had surgery and the other one takes care of her. So they're, they're short, short a couple of painters. And uh, they, they cut this week and they're going to cut, I think next Thursday. And uh, they're cutting, cutting a bunch for, we, we always do a dedication here and we'll do it, I guess, in a few weeks for the uh, four state fair up in Texarkana area. And so we just received money in here yesterday, I think. Uh, First Baptist Church of Texarkana uh, sends money to take care of those, and uh, so they'll be doing those. I guess that's what next week's cutting is for. And uh, so, so that's coming up. So, uh, so remember, remember those things. Susan Ames Dickens, Molly Clayton Jones, both had surgery this week, and, uh, and so Carolyn's asking prayer for them. Okay? Anyone? Wanda? Who? Oh, really? Has what? Cancer. Wow. Okay. Maggie Hudson. 
Maggie Hudson, all right. Any more? Doug had surgery yesterday, and uh, he had a, on, on his knee, and uh, it was really, it was supposed to be just to clean it, and it was, just to clean it out. And, uh, but the doctor did say that it was, when he got in there, it was worse than he was anticipating it to be. And so when he goes back, he may be talking about replacing it. So, but anyway, Doug, Doug did go to work this morning. I checked with him early and he, he went to work, but he said it wasn't very comfortable. So, uh, so remember Doug, Linda, my foot's good. My foot's good. I have, I have a big bruise on the side of my leg. And uh, I tell you what happened Monday. Monday, I, I left. I left here about two o'clock because I had to go do some uh, stuff at the bank for the ministry deal. And uh, so I left there about three thirty. And uh, I went home and got my trailer. And I was headed to Largent Cemetery. I was going to do a couple of stones that evening. So I, I got one of them ready and and finished it about. This was probably about six o'clock. And I started on another one. It was close by. And. Uh, my legs just hurt. They just hurt. And uh, they didn't feel bad or nothing. But anyway, this, it didn't work out. The, the stencil wouldn't stick. So I loaded up my stuff and come home. And, and I, I come in to take a shower. And Don had cooked supper. And I said, uh, I said I'm going I'm to go take a shower, see if I can get warm. I was just cold. And uh, so I went in there to do that. And I just, I colder and colder. And I, I finally just hollered. I said, hey, I'm, I'm getting in the bed. I said, I've, I've got to get warm. And uh, so I did, and a few minutes later, she brought the thermometer in there. I had 103.6 temperature. And I ran that temperature for four or five hours. And uh, I never had a headache. I never had a sore throat. I never had a stomach ache. I never, I never, had, I, I never had any ache. I was just cold. And, uh, and so it, it lasted for a while, and I had, I had 101 until last night. Uh, when I got home last night, it was still 101. And so, but I got up this morning, I didn't have any. And uh, so I, I, I have no idea what it was. So uh, Fritos still taste the same. And so I hadn't lost my taste. And, uh, you know, Cokes are still good. So, so I, I don't know what it was. I don't know. So, but anyway, I, I feel fine. So I, 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 was, I was really, con I was really, when I was laying there, my leg was hurting. That where that, thing hit the side of my leg and I was, was kind of, I've never had a blood clot before, but I was wondering if I might have one and, uh, but it didn't, it didn't hurt anymore. So, so all's good. All's good. All right. Any more? Jerry. Oh. Cody Goins. Okay. All right. Jot that down on one of those little things there on your table. And uh, we'll make sure it gets in there for Sunday. But uh, Cody Goins. Remember. Remember this one. Any more? All right. So I've got a pretty good crowd tonight. Let's have the ushers come. And uh, we'll, we'll have our offering and we'll get started. All right. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the day, for the blessings of it. Thank you for the opportunity to gather in this place tonight. Thank you for every man, woman, boy, and girl who is on our property tonight and, and in the different uh, places of, that, are, that are meeting for, uh, for study and uh, learning and for worship. We, we pray that you would bless each of us. I ask you to bless this offering and use it to the furtherance of the kingdom. And uh, we just ask you to bless this study and let it, be, let it be a blessing to us tonight. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
I have no idea what that was. It, it, it wasn't heavenly sunlight, was it? It reminded me of it, though. Well, anybody know? Is that what you were thinking, Tommy? No. Ready. Ready. Are you right? Kathy, you got it right. All right, we're in Revelation 5. Revelation chapter 5. And we will read most of the chapter kind of as we, as we get to it. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I was going last week, a couple weeks ago we were, in, we were in chapter 1 of Revelation and it introduced us to John's initial vision uh, while he was exiled there on the, on the Isle of Patmos and he, he saw the Lord in his greatness and glory, received a message that was going to be passed on to the churches. Then in chapter 2 and chapter 3, we didn't stop there, but, but we have those, those little letters, those messages to the seven churches, and you've heard them taught, you've heard them read, you've heard them preached on, and, and, and all of those things. And, and, and so that happens there. Well, when we get to chapter 5, in, in, in chapter 4, the theme of that is, is to believe in, in God the Father. In, in fact, if you have your Bible open there, look at the last verse of chapter 4. The last verse of chapter 4, it, it, well, let me, let me read up before that, but in, like in verse 10 it says, The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, now here's what they said, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power and here's, and here's the reason that he gives as he closes out chapter 4. He said, for you created all things, and by your, by your will they exist and were created. Well, he comes to chapter 5. And, and here in chapter 5, the theme where, where in chapter 4 it was believe in God the Father with the emphasis on creation. In chapter 5, it's believe in, in God the Son, and the emphasis is on redemption. Aren't you, aren't you thankful for redemption? Now, redemption ought to excite you. You remember that old hymn we used to sing sometime, Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It? Remember that? Do you, do you remember singing it before you knew what in the world it was? Man, it was just a big word in the songbook to me because, man, where I went to church over here at McKendry, if you could walk... You didn't even have to see. You certainly didn't have to try out for the choir. So, so mom and dad both went up in the choir. So you know, the time I could even hardly walk around, I, I went to the choir. I remember one time they passed the offering plate. They even passed it through the choir. You mean, did you ever go to church where they passed the offering through the choir? Well, they was passing it on that back row of the choir, and that's where I sat. And by dad, and they handed it to me, and I was going to turn around and hand it to somebody, and I dropped it. Well, you know how chinchy Baptists are, and a lot of it's just coins. All them coins are hitting the floor, rolling around and rattling around. And I, I won't ever forget dropping, dropping the offering plate in the choir. Well, well here, in, here in chapter 5, we, we, get that, we get that word. We sing about it. We, we, we talk about it. We preach about it. We, we, we're thankful for it and all those things. But it's, but it's this word, redemption. A few years ago, here in a, one of our Wednesday night series, we, 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 we did a series, and we just called it Church and Ease. And it was a, we, 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 we went at it like this. It was, it, was, it was the language of a bunch of words that we hear in church that we really don't know what they mean. And one of those words, one Wednesday night, was the word redemption. It's a word that we're, we're familiar with, but... But we, the simplest, and, and I don't know about you, but just, just speaking for me, I need the simplest possible, okay? I, I need those little yellow books that you can, I don't, there's no bookstore anymore, but you could, you, could, you could order them, I guess, and it would be, when they come out with all these computer systems, you could buy a little book that said, Windows, whatever number it was at the time, for dummies, I needed those books and, and still do need those books. Somebody's come along and they've written books about the Bible and, it, and they will like do the, the book of Acts for dummies. And, and so that, that's the way I go at things. Well, well that's the way I am with, 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 the, with the things of the Word of God. And, and this word redemption, our, I don't remember exactly what our worded definition was a few years ago, but it was, but it was something being purchased 
in the slave market and set free. Something being purchased in the slave market and set free. And if you've been saved tonight, that's what happened to you. If you can sing the song, Redeemed How I Love to Proclaim It, Redeemed by the Blood of the Lamb, it's because Jesus purchased you and he set you free. He purchased you and set you free. So, so as, as John goes through Revelation chapter 5, we have to remember that, that all of these things are written to, to groups of people. Well, well, the persecuted people who are going to read what John is going to write in this prophecy, they needed to be encouraged. You've heard about, we don't have time to discuss it tonight, but you've heard about what's happening in the world in the time of, of, these, of, this, of this revelation time. And, and so these believers, they needed to be encouraged and they needed to be challenged and to, to remember that serving Jesus was worth it. We need to be reminded in the world that we live in in 2024, that serving Jesus is still worth it. It's, it's still worth it to, to, serve, to serve Jesus. So, so let's just jump into to chapter 5, beginning with verse 1, and, and here's what it says. And John writes, he said, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back. That just means both sides, I think. Sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a young angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Now here's the voice I think of. You remember the, you remember the green, bean, green pea commercial? Do you remember that one? I don't remember what company it is. But, but the, little, the little sprout bean would come out there, but then the jolly green giant would be over there in the distance, and he'd go, ho, ho, ho. That's, that's the picture that I, that's the voice that I picture when I, when I hear this where it, where it says, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So John said this, he said, So I wept much, because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. Now there's a lot of debate, and, and we could debate this tonight, we could talk about it, we could, we could think about it, and, and, and that, would, that would be this. What was that scroll? And you know what we could do, Brother Mike, Brother Fred? We could discuss it. We could break up in little groups and we could go off in different rooms and discuss it and then we could all come back about 7.30 or so and, and we could all get back together and we could discuss it again. And you know what would happen about 8 o'clock after we ceased our discussion? We still wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. There's been all kinds of things that have been, that have been written about, and, and I, I, I printed some of those today. And, 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 and one, so some people think that the scroll is the Old Testament or the Old and the New Testament together or the fulfilled prophecy. Some think the scroll is God's claim of divorce against Israel, but little scriptural evidence for that. Some think the scroll is God's sentence against the enemies of the church. Uh, some think the scroll is the text of the book of Revelation or the next few chapters. That's unlikely. Some think the scroll is the title deed to the planet Earth. Now that, that's a feasible idea, but we still don't know. But one writer said this, and this is Barclay in, in one of his translations, commentaries. He said, the best solution is to see the scroll as God's will, his final settlement of the affairs of the universe. I don't know if it's that either. But it's, it, 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 it's another one of those feasible things. But, but this scroll, regardless of what it is, re, re, remember what happened. Back in the book of Genesis, where we were a few weeks ago or, or a few months ago now, at creation, Adam and Eve are placed in this garden, and, and they were given something over all of creation. Do you remember what the word was? Dominion. 
They were given dominion over the earth by God. He, he gave them dominion. Well, it's not long later that they mess everything up because they, they partook of that tree that he said, you leave that tree alone. So, so, so they, they sinned, and, and, and when they sinned, that permitted Satan to begin to step in to get what we would call a foothold, if you would. And, and that changed everything. And then all through Scripture, and I don't have an exhaustive list, but all through Scripture, we, we did one of these just a few weeks ago, but in, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the devil is called the God of this world. The, the one we did a few weeks ago in Ephesians 2.2, 2, he is referred to as the prince of the power of the air. Three times the Lord called Satan, the prince of this world, in the book of John. John 12, John 14, and John 16. John writes later in the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 19, he, he said this. He said, the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. So, so something happened, didn't it? Something happened. If, if God's creation, man, makes him a helpmeet, Eve. They partake of the tree that he said, leave it alone. So, so something happened for all of these other kind of things that, that are going to happen. Well, well, the scroll, it describes in detail the judgment of God against, against Satan and all of those who align with him. You say, well, who are those who align themselves with him? Well, I think it's those who openly say, we follow him. But you know who else I think it is? It's all of those who say no to Jesus Christ. Because if you say no to Jesus, you've aligned yourself with Satan. The Bible says you're either for me or you're what? That means there are no fence setters on this issue. You can be a fence sitter politically. You can be a fence-sitter in a lot of other avenues of life, but you cannot be a fence-sitter spiritually. Jesus said, you're either for me or you're against me. Well, this, this scroll, it contains the seven seal judgments. It contains the seven trumpet judgment. It contains the seven bowl judgments. It, 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 it describes how the Lord will redeem the world, how he'll resume his rightful position as the king of kings and, and the Lord of lords. So, so this angel comes along, this strong angel with this, with this green giant voice. He comes and he asks this profound question. But notice first what this question does not say. This question does not say who's willing. Can you imagine if that, if that angel would have stepped out there and said, who's willing to open this seal? There might have been a long line. There might have been. You, you think of all the, all the scriptural heroes that might could have stepped up in that line. Who's willing? But that wasn't the question, was it? question is, who's worthy? Who's worthy? What does that mean? It means who's qualified? Who's qualified to, to break the seals and, and to release the judgments of God and, and, and lay claim to the earth? Well, when, when he asked this question, who is worthy, we notice everybody that doesn't step forward. No angel steps forward. All those heroes that, that I just mentioned... Abraham doesn't step forward. Moses doesn't step forward. Paul doesn't step up. Peter doesn't step up. Mary, she can't step up. All the other heroes of the faith, they could not, they, they couldn't step up. So, so when you get down to verse number four, the, the Bible just says this, and, and, and it's John speaking, and he says, so I wept. Now, this weeping, do you, do you ever watch a Hallmark movie? Be honest, men. I'm telling you, Steve watches them with Donna sometimes. I watch Andy, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud. If I had an Andy t-shirt for every day of the week, I'd wear it with pride and honor. But there, there are a few episodes of Andy Griffith that bring a tear to my eye. There's one of those where, where Andy has to go in and have a talk with 
Opie because he thinks Opie's lying to him and he finds out Opie's not lying. And I cry every time it happens. When, when, when Opie has to set those three little birds loose after he killed their mama, you remember that one in the tree? I cry every time. But when I cry, I don't sob. Because Donna be sitting in her chair, and I'm over here in my chair, and she'll look. And what she's looking for is she's looking for a little bitty stream of water leaving my, it would be in our living room, it would be my left eye. And I'm just, I'm just weeping. That's not what John's doing here. John doesn't have a tear running down the side of his face. He, he doesn't have one running down the side of his nose. When, when, when the Bible says that, that where it says that he is weeping, what that word means is it means that his body is racked with sobs. He's crying almost, or probably we could take out the word almost. I believe that it means he is crying uncontrollably. You say, well, why? I believe this is the reason. Because he realizes that for the moment, for the moment, God's redemptive plan for believers and for creation could never be carried out if this scroll is not opened. But the question has been asked, who's worthy? Nobody steps forward. John begins to weep uncontrollably. And, and, and he, I, I just get the picture that he cries and he cries and he cries because, because the question has been asked, is there anyone worthy or who is worthy? And then finally... When you get down to verse number 5, the Scripture says, one of the elders stepped forward and he says, John, you can quit crying now because there is one. There is one who is worthy. So in our little bit of time tonight, what we want to do is we want to look at the one who is worthy. The one who is who is worthy. Number one, we want to look at who is it or who he is. Well, he, he, here's the way verse 5 begins. With, that's where one of the elders spoke, stepped up to John and he, said, and he said to me, he said, do not weep. So, so he, he quits crying and, and then this elder begins to speak and he says, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And John said, And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the world. Then he came, and he took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So what happened to John's uncontrollable crying? Do, do you remember when you was crying as a kid and your mama and your daddy walked up to you and said, dry it up? Do, do you remember that? I, I, I don't think he used those words. I don't know what the words would have been in, in, in the elder language, in the Greek language. as trans, I don't know what it would have been, but, but John's tears cried up when this elder informed him, hey, there is one. There's a lion from the tribe of Judah that is worthy to open the book. Well, well, this, this image of the lion, it, it's, I think it's the same image to John as it would be to us. It's the image of dignity. It's the image of sovereignty, of courage, and of victory. And, and, and so the Lord is further displayed for us in Scripture as, as, as the root of David. You, you get over to the prophet Isaiah. We've got to hurry through this. But the prophet Isaiah and, and most of Isaiah's writings are 700 years before the birth of Jesus. But, but the writing of Isaiah says this, 700 years before the birth of Christ, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His, his delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not 
judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall, he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be, his, be the belt of his loins, and the faithfulness of the, and the faithfulness the belt of his waist. So John turns around expecting to see this image that he's got of a lion, but what does he see? He sees a lamb. The image of a lion and the image of a lamb are two different things, aren't they? You, you, don't, you don't think of those same adjectives that, that, that we use for, for the lion. You, you, don't, you don't see it there. Well, 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 well who is this l lamb? Well, this lamb bears the marks of sacrificial death, but he's alive. He's alive. Jesus is the lamb who's taken away the sin of the world, and he, he's the lion that will rule the world. The, the, the number seven that we, that we see uh, lined up in there, the, the number seven speaks of perfection and completion. The seven horns speak of supreme power and authority. The se seven eyes speak of perfect knowledge. He knows everything. The seven spirits of God picture his supernatural ability to be everywhere at once. So, so I'm telling you tonight, just as it was in, when John dried the tears from his eyes and he sees what's going on, I'm telling you, there was one worthy that day, and there's one worthy today. And it's the same fellow. It's Jesus. So who is he? It's Jesus. Well, he's not only worthy because of who he is. He's worthy because of where he is. He's worthy because of where he is. After, after my tombstone episode last Saturday... Corey come up with this idea. He's talking to his mom on the telephone Sunday or Monday. And uh, we're, we're pretty, we're, we're not the sharpest pencils in the box when it comes to knowing what your telephone will do. You know, to, and, and I'm not as old as many of you are, but, you know, a telephone was really made to, one, to get the sports scores that you couldn't stay awake to see the final last night. And secondly, to give and receive telephone calls. Little, do, little did I know that you can, that there's a thing in there in, in one of those places in that phone, which I still don't know how to do. He'll, he'll do it for me tomorrow when I see him. But uh, that, that will always, that Donna will always be able to tell where I am. So if another tombstone falls on me and I can't reach my phone, she will begin to know where to look that night after supper when I don't show up for a meal. And, and so, so, so we're, we're able to do that. We're able to locate things. Well, we're asking about who's worthy to open the scroll. It's Jesus. And then we find out that he's not only worthy because of who he is, but because of where he is. Now, now let, let, let's, let's just make sure we all understand first where he is not. He is, he is not a baby in a manger. He's not there. He is, he is not hanging around on a cross. He is not on a hill out, outside, of, outside of the city. He is not a corpse in a tomb. He's not hanging around in the city of Jerusalem. Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb, He is exalted. But where is He exalted? Even tonight. In heaven? I believe tonight that he's in heaven. He's at the throne of God. And according to Scripture, he is orchestrating and he is directing every aspect of creation still today. He is planting nations according to the Bible. He is uprooting nations according to the Bible. He puts leaders into office. It, it's, our votes are important. I think every Christian ought to go out and vote every time. I believe that. But I'm telling you, according to the Word of God, Jesus puts leaders into office for whatever his reasons are. But he not only puts them in, you know what else he does? He takes them out. Kind of like Bill Cosby to his son. Remember that one? He says, son, I brought you into this world. I can take you out. But Jesus can put leaders in and Jesus can take letters out. Well, he's, he's directing the events that take place on this planet not just in America, not just in Lufkin, but all over this planet so that God's ultimate purpose will be carried out. 
Jesus is doing all of those things tonight. And to boot, when you lay down tonight to, to say your prayers, he'll be there to hear them. Won't he? That, I'm telling you that. He is worthy because of who he is. He is worthy because of where he is. And he is worthy because of what he did. You say, well, what did he do, preacher? Well, well go with me to verse number 7. Verse number 7 says, Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song. We get the words to the song. I don't know the tune, but we get the words to the song, and here it is. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Now some of you know that David Guzik... He is one of my favorite commentators on Scripture. Well, I looked this afternoon. I went to David Guzik's Revelation chapter 5 and, and these verses that we're reading, and I went down to the section about this song. And it, it was so good that I just printed it because I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to read, with you, read to you what, just what Guzik had to say about this new song that was being sung. He, he, he said the following things. He said, this song honors the price for redemption, where it says, for you were slain. This song honors the work of redemption. You have redeemed us. This song honors the destination of redemption. You have redeemed us to God. This song honors the payment of redemption. It's by your blood. This song honors the scope of redemption. Every tribe and tongue and people and nation. That's good news for us. This song honors the length of redemption. Have made us kings and priests to our God. This song honors the result of redemption. Is that one day we, will, we shall reign on the earth. So this is, this is the song. This is, this is the new song that they were singing beginning in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9. Well, well, well let, let me mention this to you. Jesus being referred to as the Lamb happens only two times in all of the Gospels. In all of the Gospels it happens. Once is in John 1 29 and it's a familiar one to us. It says this, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and he said the following, Behold, it's the Lamb of God who does what? Who takes away the sins of the world. In John 1, 35 and 36, it says this again, The next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Jesus is referred to as the Lamb only one time in the book of Acts. Acts 8.32, the Bible says, the place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a lamb or a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he, Jesus, opened not his mouth. And only one time in the epistles, it's in 1 Peter 1.19, 18 and 19, where the Bible says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a, there it is, lamb, without blemish and without spot. So twice in the Gospels, once in the book of Acts, once in the epistles. Take a gander at how many times he's called the Lamb in the book of Revelation. 28 times. 28 times in the book of Revelation, he is referred to 
as the lamb. So, so the Lord, Jesus, has paid the price of redemption. He takes the book from the hand of God the Father, and he has every right to unleash the powerful end-of-the-world judgments that are going to come upon all of those who have rejected Jesus Christ. And I know that there are people who throw out this silly question. Does he have the right? If you ever hear that question, you answer it this way. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He has the right to assume his rightful place as ruler of this entire world. So he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy because of who he is. He's worthy because of where he is. He's worthy because of, of what he did, because he has, he has redeemed us. And then he's worthy because of how he is worshipped. Begin with me in verse 11. He says, then I looked, this is still John, then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, a bunch of them, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing." And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Verse 14 says, then the four living creatures said, Amen. What's the word Amen mean? Let it be. Okay? Let it be. And the 24 elders fell down, and they worshipped him who lives forever and ever and ever. So as we come to this fifth chapter of the book of the Revelation, what, what is, but before we get there, what, what is the book? Turn back to the first chapter of Revelation. Just, just turn to where Revelation starts in your Bible. Are you there? What is this a revelation of anyway? Who is this a revelation of? It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's, so, so, so the emphasis here in, in this section, the emphasis is not on the scroll. The emphasis is on the one who is worthy to open the scroll. The emphasis here is on none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and think of all the words that, that he used and, and what he heard those, those who were lifting their voices or saying with a loud voice. He used the word power. He used the word riches. He used the word wisdom. He used the word strength or might, whichever one you may have. He used the word honor. He uses the word glory. He uses the word blessing. Well, you get down in, into that 13th verse, and it says that every created thing in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, they join their, they join their voice together as, as they were, and they join in the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, that's what we ought to be doing. Is our world in a mess? Yes. My grandfather would say, it's in a mel of a hess. That's what he would say. It's in a mel of a hess, son. And it is. It, it, it's a mess. It's in a mess locally. It's in a mess in, as far as the state goes. It's in a mess nationally. It's in a mess worldwide. But I'm still telling you tonight, there is one worthy, and the one who is worthy deserves our worship and our praise and our adoration, and he is still worthy. He is still good. He still saves. He still redeems, and he still has the power, and one day he will set everything straight as it ought to be set straight because he's the one worthy to do it. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you tonight for the opportunity to come to this place. And it almost seems like the first day of school. And in the first day of school, you just sort of go over everything that we've been taught before. 
And so, Lord, tonight, we, I don't think that we've mentioned anything. I don't think that we've, that we've opened a, a proverbial can of worms on anything that we've not seen. But, Lord, tonight, you've just reminded us again that on this day, in this vision that John had of what's to come, as you were the one worthy and you've shown, you've shown yourself to be worthy then, you're the worthy one today. And Lord, when the end of this world comes and, and none of us know, and Lord, that's, that's just you, when that time comes, you're going to be the one who is worthy to do everything that needs to be done and everything that needs to take place. So Lord, until that time comes, we're not here to figure out the book of Revelation, but we're here to live for you. We're here to tell others about you. We're here to share your good news. And Lord, we're here to honor and worship and to glorify you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. May every one of us in this room tonight and everyone who may view this service as a as it's streamed over the different media outlets that we have. If we have been redeemed by the Lamb of God, if we've been saved by the grace of God, may we in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Lord, don't let us go home tonight and get on Facebook and write what's wrong with life. Don't let us go home tonight and get on a social media platform and and talk about everything that's wrong with the world. But Lord, tonight may we find breath in our being to give honor and to give worship and to give glory to the King of kings, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Lamb of God, the one who redeemed us, the one who saved us. Lord, remind us as we leave here tonight that that if we've been saved, we, we are among those redeemed, those who were bought out of the slave market and then set free. And we thank you for that. Bless those we've mentioned for prayer. Bless our service on the Lord's Day. Bless all the activities that will take place between now and then and keep all of those safe who will be, be a part of any of those activities. Dismiss us under your watch and care. And let us be careful to give you honor and glory for all that you do. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.